All right, good morning, everyone. I looked at the, <laughs> looked at the watch, it's like 7.02, and I better start this morning, just in case the loyal fans <laughs> I slept in. Uh, I only have one fan, and it's on the roof. <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Good to be with you on this Monday morning, beginning of a new work week, beginning of a week of devotions, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing what the Lord has for us this week. Brother Michael, good morning. And I hope you all had a, a wonderful day yesterday in the house of God and uh, that you uh, just uh, were fulfilled, let me put it that way, fulfilled, I'm using that word on purpose uh, because of what I want to share this morning. Lindsay, good morning. Uh, yeah, so I hope everybody, wherever you went to church yesterday, you had a wonderful time. I appreciate our service yesterday. Ruth, good morning. We had a wonderful day. And uh, you know when I, I I put up on Facebook yesterday, and I don't I don't say it lightly because it can be a little bit of a uh, throwaway phrase. But uh, you know we we did enjoy the presence of the Lord yesterday, and uh, you know the Lord moved, and it was a wonderful thing, and we're very grateful and appreciative of everything that the Lord does in our church. As I'm sure you are appreciative of what the Lord does in your church, His church. Amen. All right. Let's go to Genesis 15 this morning. Genesis 15. I want to read just one verse from here. Genesis 15. And he says in verse number one, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. You know, people in life, Christian and non-Christian, uh, so many try and fill different voids in their life, uh, and it's and it's very um, it's very common today for folks to feel an emptiness. Pastor Samu, good morning. Uh, they just uh, uh, they just feel empty. They they they're lacking. They've got a void within, and 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 so therefore. When they feel that way, where there is a, a feeling of a, of a lack, I'm just not, you know, I'm just not fulfilled. I'm just, I'm not satisfied. You know what I mean? And so therefore you could be not, you, you, you may not feel fulfilled in, Sister Jean, good morning. You may not feel fulfilled in your, and, and, and many people feel voids in a lot of different areas, relationships, might not be fulfilled in that. You may not be. You, you may feel an emptiness, a void, in your workplace. You may feel an emptiness or a void in in the ministry. Uh, there are a lot of pastors who, <clears throat> you know, believe it or not, there are many pastors who just are not satisfied. They they don't feel fulfilled in their ministry. And so therefore, there, it's, a, it's a common thing today. And, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, you know, we, we, we do live in our country anyway. We live in a, a very opulent society and, and there's just uh, abundance in a lot of different areas. And sometimes when you have a lack and you see others that are progressing and, and blessed or whatever you want to call it, you do get a sensing of, how come they're like that? They're satisfied, they're fulfilled, and I'm not. I have this emptiness within me. Now, the world, the unsaved, they go to extreme lengths uh, to feel an emptiness, to fill a void in their life. Uh, the world will often uh, fill it with their alcohol. Uh, the world will often fill it with drugs, uh, prescription as well as illegal. Uh, you know, the world will fill the emptiness, the void in their life with perhaps multiple relationships. So they have this one and they're not happy about that. Then they go to this one, they go to this one, they go to that one. And, um, you know, uh, it, it's just rampant. Many people just seem, and, and many people seem to just go to all these social events and nothing wrong with a social event, but people go to those places to, to fill a void. Um, they don't feel fulfilled in their life, so they go searching for things. If there is one thing that we understand about God in the Bible is that God is, is, a, is someone who likes to fill the emptiness. He likes to fill the void. 
You know, we often read about a number of different ladies in the Bible that couldn't have children. Their wombs were barren. They were empty, but God miraculously would fill them. They felt unfulfilled in, in their role as a lady. They couldn't have children. And, and that is even the same today. And the reason why we say that is so many go through an IVF program or, or whatever. They, they, they need to have that void in their life fulfilled. And so God fills the empty womb with life. God fills an empty room, an empty place, like, like you often see God filling the tabernacle or filling the temple with his presence. He would fill that. Um, and God will often fill an empty Christian with the fullness of the Spirit. So God is someone who wants to fill the void. And when we read Genesis 15.1, where God says to Abram, He's not been called Abraham yet. He's Abram. He says he basically says to Abram, I'm more than enough for you. I'm more than enough. God starts out by saying, I am. I love that, don't you? I mean, this was, this was the very name that God said to Moses. When Moses said, well, when I go to Egypt, who am I going to say sent me? What am I going to tell the Pharaoh? What am I going to tell all these people? What am I going to say? Who sent me? And God says, tell them I am <laughs> sent. <laughs> what a name. I am. And, and again, that was what got the Lord Jesus Christ into trouble when he was on earth, when he was dealing with the Pharisees and the scribes and the, the high priests and all those people. He would say, I am. You know, I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, the life. You know, in John 14, 6, he didn't say, I am a better way, a better life, a better truth. He says, I am the, I am the one. And so God is saying to Abram, God is saying to us, I'm more than enough for you. But do we really believe that? And the reason why I ask that, and I don't care whether it, we're, we're dealing with pastors or, you know, Christians in general, because pastors feel like this too. Christian people feel like this, this void, this emptiness. And we might give a, uh, we might, we might word it and say, oh yes, God is more than enough. And we sing songs, there's some of our hymns where, where we'll attest to that. God is more than enough. But deep down inside, do we really believe that? Do we search for him or are we searching something else, some other external source in our life to fill a void, to fill an emptiness in our life? Where God says, I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. I, I am more than enough for you, Abram. Now, God showed him that in many different ways. Because God is not against a, 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 you know, a believer uh, being fulfilled in relationships. He's not against us being fulfilled in our workplace, situations, ministry. He's not against that at all. I would say what he would be against is us trying to find what fulfills. Instead of us searching God and going to God and saying, God, I, and he knows, and going to God and saying, I, I, I have this void in my life, would you fill that? It's very different approaching it that way than just taking bat and ball in hand and going, and I'm so right, I'm just going to go and look over here for it. You know what I mean? This is where also a lot of people get into strife. Uh, I had a family member with the Lord now who, who, who felt that way, felt unfulfilled in their life. God, God, she said this, God wouldn't want me to be sad. God wouldn't want me to be unhappy. So, so she went and looked for a very much younger man to fill the void. Judy, good morning. Um, and I, would, I wish, wish I could say, and everything was right, but it wasn't. It wasn't. There was a lot of issues, a lot of issues. So it's a very different approach where, yes, we recognize perhaps an a, 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 a unfulfilled life. I'm not satisfied and I feel a void. Very different than approaching that yourself and trying to fill it or going to God because God is more than enough for us. 
God is the God of abundance. Okay? That's why Jesus said, he said, you know, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. So we know that, that the Lord Jesus wants to have us experience the abundant life, but the abundance of that comes through him, not through us sourcing it through other avenues and other means and, you know, thinking this way, that way, a young person, oh, you know, I'm 21 and I, I need to be married by now, you know what I mean? Like, and, and you know, I'm, I'm just being left on the shelf, you know, I'm 21. And, and so what they do is they join all the dating apps, whether they're Christian or not, you know what I mean? And so what they're doing is they're, they're trying to fill a void their way. Remember I mentioned yesterday for our folks, I said we, we're happy for God to lead us and we're happy to follow God if he leads us where we want to go. Okay, So God is not distant from how we feel. He's very much in tune with our life. That's why he said in Hebrews 4 that we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He feels our infirmities. He, he knows what we experience and going through. He understands all of that. But he also wants us to understand that he is more than enough. I am. I am. Personal. Me, he's saying. And so therefore he says to Abram, he says, he says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. What is very interesting about this? What is very interesting about this is that when we read chapter 15 of Abram, the life of Abram, who soon to become Abraham a couple of chapters later, uh, this is what we call the Abrahamic covenant that God makes with Abraham, Abram. And we read it in chapter 15 where he divides the sacrifices, he walks through it and all of that. 16 is a little bit of a, uh, an interlude, if you please, because God says, I'm going to make, him a, I'm going to make you a, a, a father of many nations. And, and of course, again, Sarah. Now, here is, here is a point in case of someone trying to fill the void themselves. Sarah couldn't get pregnant, remember? And so therefore, they take matters into their own hands. And this is what starts the whole mess in, in, from now onwards, you know what I mean? We're not going to get into that. But, but Sarai, Sarah goes to Abram, Abraham. She says, hey, I can't have children. Go to Hagar, you know what I mean? Like, so I can be fulfilled through her. And, the, and, and it just, Ishmael, the child of impatience, you know what I mean, comes and is birthed. But Sarah represents the believer who, who is unfulfilled. She has a void. She, she's not satisfied. And so therefore, she goes looking elsewhere. Well, you get to chapter 17. And God continues the dialogue and, and the whole thing about this covenant that he's going to make with Abram slash Abraham. And, and what's amazing, and I've pointed this out before, and, and please just bear with me as I show it to you again in, in, in Genesis 17. He says in verse 5, he says, for, I, for a father of many nations, the end of the verse, have I made thee. And he says, I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for everlasting covenant to be a God under thee and to thy seed after thee. And I'll give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, the land of Cain and so on and so forth. AJ, hey, good morning. Well, again, if you, if you just go with me briefly to, to Galatians chapter 3, because the seed in Genesis 17 is singular. And Paul gives us the understanding of who that is. Now, I'm going somewhere, so just stay with me for a minute. He says in Genesis 3, verse 16, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So going back to Genesis 15 and 17, the, 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 the promise of the covenant was dealing with the promise of the, the covenant-giving Christ. Ah, Marie, good morning. The, the, the promise back in Genesis 15 was, was what I would say a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of that promise. 
And so what I'm saying is this to every one of us, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who fulfills our every need. He is the one who fills the void. Jesus Christ is our shield and exceeding great reward. Now think of that ex that term exceeding great reward. It talks about this abundance. He talks about what's a reward? Well, a reward is 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 like a prize. And I'm just you know, when you think about a prize, you think, wow, you know what I mean? I, I've, I've won, I don't know if you've ever won a prize before, maybe way back in the day in school, you crossed the line, you got first place. And you got a prize or second or third, but you're still happy to have this prize. And, and uh, it was a reward for doing well in the race. Well, Jesus now is our exceeding great reward. He is our prize. And when you, when you receive a prize, man, you're so elated with that. You're so excited about that. And it's something that you want to protect, something that you want to maybe even show off. You know, come, people come to your house, look what I won, you know what I mean? And maybe back in the day, mum or dad had a cabinet where they would place all the trophies or the ribbons or whatever it was and a testament to little Johnny winning all these things. But see, as Christians, we don't, when we're feeling unfulfilled in our life or dissatisfied in our life, there's this emptiness there. Instead of going to search the fullness through other means, we just simply go to the Lord. He is, our, he, he is more than enough for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our shield. He's our protector. He protects us from things. You say, well, what about the times that I got into trouble? I tell you, for me, the times that I got into trouble were the times where I actually left or walked out from behind the shield, if you know what I mean. As long as I've got that shield in front of me, it's like that shield of faith in Ephesians chapter 6. It quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked, but I've got to be behind that shield. The moment I walk out from behind that shield, I become a target. So, you know, when you think about believers who are uh, experiencing perhaps some things in their life that just doesn't look right, it may be that they've walked out from behind the shield. They need to get back behind the shield because Christ is our protector. Christ is our protector, but also when you think about it, Jesus is, is our provider. That's included in, in, in that phrase, exceeding great reward. He's our protector. He's our provider. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all thy need. Do we believe that? You know what I mean? Or do we go looking elsewhere for provision? Uh, do we start relying upon our own wisdom to try and work out how I can fill this void of emptiness, this lack? I just don't seem to have enough money coming in. What am I going to do? Well, hang on a second. Before you run to your own wisdom and go searching elsewhere... Go to the one who is your provider. That was one of the what they call the redemptive names of God back in the Old Testament, Jehovah Jireh. The Jehovah Jireh really means the God who sees. But not just the God who sees, yes, the God who sees and provides. Look at it back there. We won't turn there this morning, but you'll see that back in Genesis 22. So, Jesus, remember now, we're talking about when God said to Abram in Genesis 15, 1, I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. He makes this covenant and he makes it to Abram and his seed. That seed is Christ. So Christ now is our protector. He's our provider. He's our, he's our, he's our possession. We, not, we don't own him in the sense we boss him, but, but we have him. He's mine. He purchased us, we understand that, but when you get a reward, it comes into your possession. So he's my possession, he is mine. I am his and he is mine. And uh, he's our, he, he's our, he purchased us, he's our purchaser. So what I'm saying this morning is this, is that yes, we all experience times in life where we just sense this dissatisfaction, this unfulfillment, this void, this emptiness in life. 
And sometimes you go, I just can't put a finger on it. I just, I just don't feel abundant. I just don't feel that I have enough. Well, we all know that feelings deceive, but we understand what we say by that. We remind ourselves that God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is more than enough. And that's what he was saying to Abram. I am. I am. Not, not, not this person, not this thing, not, not that, not this, not whatever. I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. In that phrase, I am thy shield and exceeding great reward, speaks of trust and faith. Do we trust him? Do we have faith in him to fulfill our every need, to fill the void, to satisfy? He satisfies the hungry soul, doesn't he? The scriptures talk about that. But do we trust him and have faith in him to do such a thing? Reminding us this morning that God is more than enough. And I hope you believe that. I hope you believe that. So next time you have these thoughts or feelings of, of this void in my life and unfulfilled and unsatisfied and all that, go to the Lord who is your shield and exceeding great reward. He is everything that you need. You know, I learned this a long time ago and I'll close with this. Uh, my, my wife, Tracy, is a blessing, but she doesn't meet all my needs 100%. She can't. And the, right, the reason why God made it that, that a husband and a wife don't fulfill all our needs 100% is because if that was the case, there would be no room for God. Only God can fulfill a person's needs 100%. Only God can fill the void 100%. Only God can satisfy the unsatisfied 100%. God is more than enough. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for being the God of more than enough. Thank you for being our shield and exceeding great reward. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving us. Thank you for purchasing us. Thank you that we have you as a possession in our life. And I pray as we go our way today that you would lead us and guide us. And may we give you praise in all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Have a great day in the Lord today. Thank you for being with us this morning. God bless you. Have a great day. Look forward to being with you tomorrow morning. Until then, God bless and goodbye for now.